Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video I'm going to show how to do these advanced twirl smooth zoom transitions in HitFilm Pro. So I'm going to be working today in a project that has three clips that are each 24 frames per second. If you're working in 30 frames per second or some other speed, that's fine too. Just understand that I'm working in 24 frames per second, so the frames that I'm choosing are based on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the first cut, and you can see we're just going to make this between this one and this one. We're going to put these all on a grade clip. So the way you do that is by hitting Control, Alt, and G to add a grade clip. Now I'm going to move back half a second, which in 24 frames per second would be 12 frames. And then I'm going to move forward half a second from the other side of the cut. So now with this highlighted, I can go ahead and open up the controls panel. And you can see that when I open up the display timeline, it's not much room here. So I'm just going to go ahead and temporarily bring this down to this larger panel so that when I open this up, I have a lot more room here to work. Okay. And if I go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit, then I can see the entire length of the clip here, all 24 frames of it. Buttoning up these two panel items, I'm going to open up my favorites because in here I have put the five effects that I'm going to use to create this. And I'm going to put these down here in order. Starting with Perspective Warp, I will put that in first. Then I will add a Twirl effect underneath that. And just for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and zero out the angle. Then underneath that, I will place a Zoom Blur effect. And again, just for now, I'm going to zero out the strength of that. Then I'm going to add an Action Cam Lens Distort effect. And then, finally, I'm going to add a chromatic aberration effect. All right, starting with the perspective warp, I'm going to twirl this open. And I'm going to move back one quarter of a second, which in this case is six frames from the cut itself. And then under the Z distance, I'm going to set a keyframe. I will then move to the last frame of the first clip, where I will set the Z distance to 5. Then I will move forward one frame, and I will set it to 0.2. Then I will move six frames forward in the second clip, and I will set this back to 1. And so now you can see that this is creating the zoom in effect, or zoom away effect in this case, okay? Of course, you could do it the other way as well, just your, your choice, all right? Buttoning that up and turning it off for a second, let's look at Twirl. Twirl, I'm going to start back 12 frames, or the full half a second behind, and then I'm going to set a keyframe for the angle. I will then move forward to the very last frame of the first clip, and I will set this to about 45. I want to go ahead and increase the radius so that it covers the entire shot. Then I will move forward one frame, and I will set this to negative 45. And then I will move to the last frame of that clip and set it back to zero. So this is the twirl part of the advanced twirl smooth zoom transition. Okay. When I add those two together, then you can see that it is zooming and also twirling a little bit. Okay. Now the third thing I'm going to do is add a zoom blur. This will create a sort of fake motion blur in this shot. So again, I want to back up to 12 frames. And then I'm going to set the strength of that to zero and keyframe it there. Coming to the last clip of the first two. And let me turn these two off again. Then I will go ahead and set this to about 50. Okay, just enough to give a zoom blur. Then I will move forward one frame and set this to negative 50. And then I will move to the last frame of the grade layer and set it back to zero. So this adds that sort of zooming uh, blur effect. This basically just fakes motion blur is what it does. The next effect I'm going to deal with is the action cam lens distort effect. 
And again, I'm going to go to the first frame of the grade layer, and I'm going to set a keyframe for the field of view, or the FOV. Then I will move to the last frame of the first clip, and I will make this 40. And then I'm going to move to the first frame of the second clip, and I'm going to set a keyframe of 40 there also. And there's a reason why I'm doing that. You'll see that in a second. Then I'll come to the last frame of the grade layer and set it back to zero. So this is just creating a little bit of a bulging effect here this way. Can you see that? And then it unbulges as it comes out. Okay. All right. Then the last effect I'm going to work with is the chromatic aberration effect. And again, I will come to the beginning of the grade clip and I will set the distance to zero and set a keyframe there. Then I will move to the last frame of the first clip and set this to about 10%. This just sort of creates that distortion of chromatic aberration. Then I will shift forward one frame and set this to negative 10, so it shifted the other way. And then I will come to the last frame of the clip, uh, the grade clip, and set it to zero. All right, so when I add up all these together, then basically I'm going to get this sort of funky looking thing here, all right? And it doesn't look terrible. However, I want to set these keyframes to be a little bit more dynamic. So what I want to do is while here in the controls panel, I'm going to hit the U key. This will bring up all of these keyframes, all right? So now I'm going to start with the perspective warp and opening up the value graph, you can see that these keyframes are all linear. I'm going to grab them all and I'm going to make them Bezier. And now I want to create what is called an exponential curve on this. So I'm going to grab the handle of this one and I'm just going to pull it down. And then I'm going to grab the handle of this one and I'm going to pull it up this way. Now I'm going to bring these handles in. Here's a pro tip for you. If I just start bringing them in, then they can get kind of moved all over the place. So instead what you do is hold the shift key down and then they won't move no matter how much you move your cursor. You're just bringing this in a little bit and then I'm going to do the same on this one here. Okay, this way. All right now looking at the angle, again I'm going to grab all of these keyframes, set them to Bezier, and then again I want to do the same thing. I want to bring this one down so that it's pointing this way. Bring this one up so that it's pointing this way. And then bring these two handles in a little bit, creating exponential curves in and out of the focal point of the transition. All right, with regards to the zoom blur, again, I'm going to make these all Bezier. And again, I'm going to create an exponential curve, the same that I did before. Now looking at the field of view, you're going to see that these have a different shape here. And so I'm going to grab these, set these to Bezier, and here's what's going to happen. The first half of this is going to be set as an exponential curve, but then I want the second half to be set as a reverse exponential curve this way. So it curves in quickly, but then pulls out slower this way. Okay. And then the last but not least, the chromatic aberration distance, I am again going to set these to Bezier, but both of these I want to create as a reverse exponential curve this way so that it really does kind of zoom out first and then it ends with it coming back into focus. Okay. All right. Now that I've done all of that, I'm going to go ahead and move the control panel back up here and I can go ahead and hit the U key again just to reset everything here. And now here I am out on my timeline and when I play this through, you can see there it is, right? Now the beauty of this is, is that I can go ahead and take this exact clip and just copy and paste it and it will work for the next one and the next one and the next one. And I can have a hundred of these in my timeline. Wherever I want to create this transition, I can go ahead and use this grade clip now that I have it. 
So I'm Jay Haynes with the Film Sensei YouTube channel, and this has been how to create an advanced twirl smooth zoom transition. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.